Hey guys, David Small here, and I just got back from Pleasanton, California, where I was competing in Robo Games 2017. I had an absolute blast, met a lot of cool people, and saw some awesome robots. This video is going to follow the fights of my two entrants, my one pound four bar flipper named the Highlander, and my 150 gram vertical spinner named Gimli. We're also going to take a look at my friend Ashley's robot Ironside, which is a one pound flipper. Alright, let's take a look at some fights. I'm only going to be looking at bits and pieces of each of them, but if you want to watch the full fight, I'll have links in the description and possibly some annotations to watch the whole thing. So the first fight of the day was with Gimli, my vertical spinner. It was against a flipper named Swarf. Swarf's construction only began two days before the event, so that was actually kind of impressive for them to get it ready in time. After a few hits, Gimli was able to knock Swarf on its back, and was able to get in a few more decent hits, making the linkage come loose on Swarf's flipper. Swarf was unable to self-right, and Gimli wins its first fight of the day, and also giving me my first victory of my entire combat robotics career. Up next, my Antweight 4-bar flipper, the Highlander, went against a vertical spinner named Maverick. I wasn't able to get under him, his wedge was too low to the ground and then his spinner bent up my scoop, so I definitely wasn't able to get under him. But then suddenly, he just stopped moving. Um, eventually, Maverick was counted out, and the Highlander won by knockout. It felt like a really dirty way to win, but I talked to Nick later, and he told me that the reason it died was the power switch wasn't tightened all the way, and it just came loose because of the vibrations of the spinner motor. But that actually didn't stop him from succeeding, as he ended up getting 4th place in the Antweight tournament, and actually getting the gold medal in the Junior Ant League with his drum spinner. Then it was time to take the Highlander back to the pits and inspect the damage. Most of the damage the Highlander took was to the scoop and wedgelets in the front. The flimsy aluminum is obviously not combat worthy, but I don't really have a choice except to bend it back into shape and then fight again. Then my friend Ashley was up with her Antweight Ironside, a servo flipper that I helped her make, as you can see by the similar material and structure as the Highlander. Ironside's defining features, of course, the amazing hand-engraved Nordic runes all around the body and scoop of the robot, as well as the self-riding broadsword pointed skyward. Ironside was matched against a drum spinner named Muisaka. Unfortunately, most of the fight was Ironside stuck on one of the screws of Muisaka, and Muisaka won by a judge's decision, and Ironside was sent to the loser's bracket. Gimli was up again for his second fight now. This time it was against 2015's fairyweight champion Dust Bunny, a clamping bot. I was able to get a decent hit or two in between being clamped and pinned against the wall, but then everything went horribly wrong as Dust Bunny suplexed Gimli spinner first into the arena floor, snapping off the 3D printed mounts for the motor. The broken motor then cut one of the weapon wires and one of the drive motor wires, so I was unable to move. This ended up with Gimli taking its first loss, but it was a pretty cool way to lose, so I'm fine with it. So upon further inspection, you can see that the 3D printed ABS failed. The next version is either going to have to be a solid infill, use a different filament like nylon, or be made out of something that isn't 3D printed. You can also see the signal wire and the purple drive wire that was cut by my own weapon. But since Gimli still has more fights ahead in this tournament, I had to super glue them back together and get him ready for the next fight. Ashley's Ant Ironside was ready for its next fight against another vertical spinner named Antares. After a few hits, the scoop was bent up and Ironside was unable to get under him. Um, then he landed a few good hits, knocking Ironside up into the air and getting her to land on her face, balancing on the sword and the flipper. This actually came up while we were testing her robot before the event, and we just hoped it wouldn't happen. But, I mean, that's what happens when you start building a week before the competition. Uh, Antares was either kind or bloodthirsty, depending on how you look at it, and knocked her back on her feet. He landed another big hit, knocking Ironside over on her side, but once again, he knocked her back over. Then he continued to land hit after hit until time was up, so Antares was the winner, declared by a judge's decision, and unfortunately Ironside is now out of the competition. Then it was the Highlander's turn again. I bent the wedges back into place and it was ready for another fight. This time it was against the scary drum spinner MC Frypants, who was a long time veteran of the sport. I did my best to outdrive him and avoid the drum spinner, even to the point of the announcer commenting on it. Oh! Highlander with an expert maneuver attacks the backside of MC Frypants. But the drum proved too powerful and Frypants was too quick. He landed some great blows and threw me up in the air a few times, making me a true Highlander. 
Once again, my scoop was bent up too much to get anything done, and then eventually completely fell off. And though I was able to outpush him, the rest of the fight was just hit after hit from Fry Pants, so of course he won by a judge's decision. But I was very pleased to survive the whole fight. Then it was back to the pits again to inspect the damage. The most obvious was the entire scoop being ripped off from the arm. The wedgelets were once again bent up, but this time the arm itself was also bent. Time to bust out the hammer again. Upon further investigation, the battery also suffered a hit. Luckily, it didn't do anything except peel off the label a little bit. Otherwise, that match would have ended in a lot more exciting way. So now in the loser's bracket, I felt the scoop was too badly beat up to use. So I decided to make a new one using the top plate of my three-pound robot, Doomforge. I wasn't able to get Doomforge ready in time, so it wasn't able to compete. But since I had it here with me, I figured I might as well sacrifice it to let the Highlander live to fight another day. Gimli was back up again against a simple wedge named Slice. Slice was much, much faster than Gimli and was darting all around the arena while I tried to chase him. But after I landed a decent hit or two, it was immobilized, and I managed to advance to the next round without the robot or the super glue coming apart. Highlander's next fight was against Antares, the same robot that took Ashley and Ironside out of the tournament, so I was pretty nervous. I played it a little more defensively, ramming with the rear of the robot and getting flips in wherever I could. After a few flips, Antares began to show some sign of drive issues. So I continued to flip and flip, and he got a good hit on one of my wheels and forced the tread off the hub, and this jammed it. So now both of us are having drive problems, but I was still able to get a bunch more flips and grind his weapon on the floor and walls of the arena. The match went the distance, and the Highlander won by a judge's decision. As predicted, the only damage was the scoop and the wedgelets being bent up again, but they were once again fixed, and the tread was realigned on the hub, and Highlander was ready to go. Gimli's fourth fight was against... Okay, that was quick. Uh, Gimli's fourth fight was against the Plague, which is a simple wedge, but really fast and powerful, so after being knocked onto its back, the spinner on Gimli broke again, and it was unable to self right it flopped around the arena for a little bit longer, but it was eventually counted out, and at this point Gimli is now out of the tournament. The Highlander's next fight was against a big vertical spinner named Little Overload. Um, I did my best to dance around and try to dodge his attacks, but eventually I got hit and knocked up on my back, and for the first time I got to try out the Self Rider, which works just fine, but then I just kept taking hit after hit and after a massive beating, I land on my back one final time, and the arm stopped working. So I was counted out, and the win went to little overload by knockout. So with Highlander out of the tournament, I took it back to the pits to see just how beat up it was. Of course, the wedgelets and the scoop were bent up, as they always were. The side panels were torn apart and bent horribly. The whole chassis of the frame was basically bent into an arc, and the self-rider was also bent. Some screws came loose in the arm, and lastly, two of the drive gearboxes were destroyed. So it was quite a fight to leave on. Very cool and exciting match, though. So here we have the tournament results. On the left side, you can see the one-pound ant weights, where the Highlander tied for 13th place, along with no anchovies, duende, and bacon. Then on the right side, we have the Fairy Weight 150 gram robots, where Gimli is tied for 7th place with the Hornet. So both robots went 2-2, two and two, which I'm very happy with, especially since it was their first time fighting. Um, but of course, I have lots of design ideas and new plans for the next versions of the robots, which I'm very excited to get started on. And at the end of the day, there was the Ant Weight Rumble, so of course I had to do my best to get the Highlander reassembled so that it could participate. The chassis was too bent up to re-screw the plates back on, so there's a lot of duct tape involved holding this robot together. The really exciting part about this fight was that I got to fight with Dan Chatterman, the creator of Rex. Um, he had his one-pound prototype of Rex named Gyrobot which is actually a two-pound robot because walkers get that additional weight bonus. And it's the same principle as Rex, using the gyroscopic motion to uh, waddle back and forth. So that was really cool. Plus, I got him pinned up on the wall! So then the Highlander survives the entire rumble with four or five other robots, and thus ends an exciting weekend at RoboGames 2017. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more robot videos in the future.